Uh, hello everyone. I am Rodrigo Leonardi. I work at the Brazilian Space Agency and today I would like to say hi to all of the professionals, greet all of the professionals in Peru. I also would like to thank the Space Agency in Peru, CONIDA, for the opportunity today to present to you to give a presentation on the projects and initiatives of the Brazilian Space Agency that support the development of Brazil. The summary of my presentation is the following. First, I'm going to talk about the Brazilian Space Agency, the work that we have, we perform at our country for space works. And then I would like to present projects and initiatives of the agency for the development of our country. And at the end of the presentation, I would also like to talk about the education mainly on STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, derived from the space activity. Well, okay, let's start with the Brazilian Space Agency. It is responsible for formulating, coordinating, and executing the Brazilian space po policy. We were created in 1994, so now we have been active for 26 years, are working to promote projects and initiatives in the space sector for the welfare of the Brazilian society. Here we are in Brasilia, which is the capital, but it's not possible to perform such a complex work such as this by itself. So we have partnerships with our orga public organizations and private organizations to promote the efforts of Brazil in this space activity. So we work in a framework in brazil we call it sindai the national system for the development of space activities where we have the government together with research centers who perform research and development also with the centers that provide the infrastructure for the welfare of our country and also the industry and the universities. So this slide is showing an agency in the middle of the system trying to coordinate the efforts so as to better provide the space services in Brazil. It looks simple when you see the drawing but it's actually very complex. It's complex for Brazil and for sure also for other countries. I'm sure that also Peru has its challenges and it's a complicated task and the space agency in Peru, CONIDA, also think and act in this similarly. So let me show you first how Brazil is planning to work in space activities and then we are going to talk somehow about the projects that we are performing in Brazil for the development of our country. So as I showed you, there are some organizations that are public and here in this map, you may see the distribution of these organizations in Brazil. Brazil in the middle of the mission, so that's where we have the space agency. But all of the infrastructure is to the south and to the north of Brasilia. And we also have universities and research centers in all of the national territory. So together with this government effort, the universities also participate in Brazil, we have courses of space engineering. So we have eight courses in Brazil, and we also have organizations that offer postgraduate courses. And they are also here, as you may see in the map, they are distributed in a big part of the country. And here it is where we invest in our young engineers who will be the professionals of the future in our program. So all of this is done in parallel, yes, to our activities. And with this effort, we have private institutions in the Brazilian industry, from the Brazilian industry. And what you can see here, it's a current publication of the agency that presents all of the capacity, Brazilian capacity to act in the space. Uh, interested, those who, of you who are interested in learning more uh, about the space industry, you may visit this website, gov.br, 
and you will find yes, a, B, I, B, a B you will find the Brazilian uh, yes locations what technologies uh, we have at a E B and how the industry is participating in our country so with this introduction what I would like to be clear on is that when one country thinks it is planning to tackle the space activity which is very complex it has to formulate to do it in collaboration between the government the university and the private initiative as well if you get an organized effort of these three segments of the society so you will have available the best in order to think and execute the space policy so it's very important not only for Brazil or other countries it is in continuous coordination with these different um, representatives of the society in the country to tackle the challenge of having a complete space program so this is the introduction so we may learn how Brazil thinks and acts on its space program now I would like to talk about a Brazilian projects more specifically on Brazilian satellites so here we have the satellites of the Brazilian space program the first one that we launched was in the 90s it was a satellite for data collection in 1993 it was launched in 1993 to collect environmental data and to monitor our territory those were two satellites from that group one and two and they are still in operations and then Brazil has made a big effort to have satellites for earth observation and for that it um, subscribed an international cooperation with China and together with China we developed we launched six objects here you have the list the cyber one launched in 1999 and the most recent one the 4a launched in December of last year so these are international corporations between Brazil and China so basically what we do is half of the project is developed in Brazil and the other half in China and together we develop these um, projects so this family has already been six objects in more than 30 years of uh, joint work more recently Brazil has made an effort to put a national orbit a national satellite for telecommunications the purpose is this what you see here on this slide yes for telecommunications that is GDC it, that was launched in 2017 with a big effort from our country to offer the bandwidth signal in all of our country and now we're working with our next project which is the Amazonia one which is also for the earth observation and this we are doing in Brazil yes it is a 100% national project with intelligence here is from organizations and the industry from our country the truth is that uh, we were planning to launch this object this year but due to the problems with the COVID-19 COVID we have had to postpone the launching and we are preparing it to be launched with an international partnership with India at the beginning of 2021 so this satellite is practically ready and it will be launched at the beginning of next year 
So the, these are all our projects, complex, they are very complex. And the investment required, the funding and work is very big. So these are projects that take many years in being ready to, to get them ready and then the needs it, its approval so continuously we have to be working on the projects and guarantee that they can complete the, the life cycle of the project until they are operational the truth is that the space era needs this uh, support investment and patience but we also have in our portfolio, in our program, space program, we have technological programs of low cost for small satellites. These are cheaper satellites with a limited capacity, but that are very important for the development and the training of engineering. These projects, we have done uh, already a couple of them. Here you have the list. We have Sat CB1 was the first one that we launched six years ago in 2014. It is still in operations uh, when it received some uh, sun lighting in its uh, solar panels. And then we have launched other objects. The most recent one has been the SAT also launched last year in December of last year. So these objects are much cheaper and um, faster to be prepared and we did them in collaboration with universities, Brazilian universities. So we have two categories of projects, S expensive projects with benefits for our society. We have to plan them because we have to give them to society and low-cost projects, very cheap, that we use for training to provide new technologies. And here it is showing a list of all the Brazilian satellites categorized, produced so far. The first one was back in 1990 and the most recent last year, the Floripa Sat. This year we haven't had a chance to launch any object, but uh, any, any server we're getting ready to launch one at the beginning of next year. The Amazonia one will be launched in Brazil in the beginning of next year. So these are the satellites in the history of the Brazilian satellite service. There, there are also initiatives for r rockets, space rockets. The truth is that Brazil has it dominates the technology for rockets, suborbital rockets. They are sent to space and they may perform some experiment in the space, but they don't have the capacity to launch satellites in a stable orbit. But we are working on that. And in our family of uh, rockets, we are working now in the S S50 which is to the right of the image, the VS-50. And it is a necessary demonstrator for our VLM, which will be our launcher for the small satellites of the Brazilian, that the Brazilian Space Agency is preparing. So this is an additional effort to the satellites. But we should also recognize that with the satellites we wanted to, yes, we've had some successful stories with the suborbitals. We have also been very successful. And our challenge now is to have a vehicle, national vehicle launched for small satellites. Now I would like to refer, talk more about the benefits that these projects bring to the Brazilian society. So let me start with the geostationary Satellite for the Defense and Communications, the SGDC, which has been launched in 2017. So this object that you see here in this photo to your right, it provides a coverage with internet for the whole national territory. The idea of the inclusion 
is a digital inclusion for all of the citizens and also providing a safe means and sovereign for the strategic communications of the federal government. The satellite operates in X and K, KA bands for the use of communications of defense that represents 30% of the use of the equipment and to reach the most remote areas of Brazil in the north and northeast that correspond to the 70% of the capacity. More importantly, the, their capacity is the services that we can provide. Nowadays, this Brazilian satellite offers bandwidth connections to more than 9,000 public schools. It has more than 12,500 points uh, installed. We're, we're still working to improve them. It's providing benefits to more than two and a half million of students in the public Brazilian public system and also reaching indigenous areas and basic health units. So this, for me, it is a specific example, a clear example of how the uh, space systems are tools to integrate and mitigate the inequalities in the Brazilian society. So STDC from our programs, uh, we have a system of telecommunications, a national system for the use, for the benefit of our citizens. But even more than that, when we start working on this work a project, we made an effort to guarantee that during the execution of the project, there should be some technological transfers of knowledge uh, from the European industry. Basically, the Thales Alinea space from France and Italy and it was the contract with this purpose. And when we subscribed the acquisition of the SGDC, we also subscribed a plan so that uh, the association of the, the Brazilian industry to plan the transfer of critical technology for our industry so that we may use it in other systems. So here you have an example of a good project, telecommunications. This is a service for the society, but also that by executing it, we bring knowledge and competence for our industry. And here you have the logo of the Brazilian companies that have had a chance to participate in this effort. Yes, Ibraforte, Cenic, AL, Orbital, and other systems. They are in the state of Sao Paulo. One of them is uh, in Rio Grande do Sul. And these companies, so then, during the execution of the SGDC, they have participated in the project and they have incorporated competences for the development uh, to produce hyper-stable panels where you can put your camera and your payload and that they want you move propulsion systems for attitude control the payloads optical instruments for earth observation also systems for the thermal control and interface to protect the satellites all of the um, technology for batteries solar panels and also F FPGA for the onboard systems of the satellite. So we have guaranteed with this uh, SGDC activities for the development of our country, but also to improve the knowledge of the Brazilian industry, the technology related to satellites. So this has been a project, it is a project, a very important project in Brazil. So now I would like to refer to another project, which is the Sievers family uh, for Earth. And we do it in partnership, yes, with Brazil. So the last one we launched was a year ago, the Sievers 4A. We did it in partnership with them. And their satellites, it's Earth observation mainly, and their images are used in control of the deforestation 
uh, firefighters in the um, Amazon, the monitoring of the water resources uh, in the farming areas, the urban growth, the use of the land. We also use it in education and in many other applications. Here you have an example of an image with a Seavers 4A already in operations. It will be sending images for Brazil and here you have an example of one of the images of the payload during the incident that occurred in Beirut in Lebanon two months ago when there was an explosion and unfortunately it was a huge impact for the local community so Seavers could help to assess what happened uh, that opportunity. This is an image from one of the cameras from the satellite. We have payloads from two meters to some tens of meters. And we have images a visible and infrared. So SGDC and CBERS were projects where Brazil needed of an international partner to facilitate the project. So one of those partners was the uh, company, the, 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 the one from China is the second partner. So we are making an effort to have our Earth observation satellite where we don't have an international partner yet and we are doing everything here in so Amazonia 1 which is the name of this object it will be the first earth satellite observation based on a Brazilian technology we have our Brazilian platform that we have developed for this satellite so that we may use it in other missions and it was completely designed integrated and it will be operated by Brazil. And here you have a recent photo of a few weeks ago of the satellite being tested at our facilities at the National Institute of uh, Social Research in the city of Sargent of Dos Campos. So it's gone through tests, uh, thermal tests before it will be sent to India for its launching. This is a satellite where we have, we've had, we've made a big effort to be able to test, to qualify technology, national technology. And there is a photo here. This was last year, but uh, during the setting, the tests of Amazonia, here I am in the photo, in, right in the middle, to my left is a colleague from Houston Suber. He's the manager of the project. And to our right, our colleague from Fornai, which is from Argentina, who helped us uh, for a review of the status of the project. So which are the main technological advances with Amazonia 1? First is to qualify our platform, our technology, uh, and to ensure the P PMM uh, so that we make sure that it may be used for other satellites in the future. We will also gain knowledge, the consolidation in the complete cycle of the development of stabilized satellites with three axes, gaining maturity in the activities of integration and satellite testing here in our country. Also, this is an opportunity to offer challenges for the industry and especially the aperture mechanisms of the solar panel in other satellites such as Sievers that were provided by China and now we have done it in Brazil. Also, it's been a huge opportunity to help ourselves to develop our own propulsion subsystem for the attitude control and orbit in the national industry. Some of this equipment we acquired in other countries, 
but the engineering is national and another challenge it will be for the first time the launch for the launching Brazil will be responsible for the uh, activities of LEOP the launch early operation phase which will be the operations of launching and commissioning that we do for the satellites yes before the launching he, at Sievers these operations were executed with China and now we're going to do it by ourselves so here again one example of offering a service to the our society with Earth observation satellites but also at the same time by taking the opportunity that we have national projects to promote the development of it, our industry, of our technology, of our capacity to develop a space system. So as I've said, as I've already mentioned, whenever possible we do it with Brazilian companies. Here you have a list of Brazilian companies and their contribution for the project. Say Nick has worked in the service module Orbital has provided all of the technology for the generation of in the system propulsion in propulsion fibra forte and also for the payloads the cameras uh, on board and they have been provided by the Scenic uh, we have uh, Equatorial and other companies. So we have, yes, we've had uh, industries and also the Argentinian industry, INVAP, is also a partner in our Amazonia mission. So whenever we work on a project uh, this complex, uh, why not say it's so expensive? We try to get the most of, of the benefits so we have also used these systems as an opportunity learning opportunity practical for the engineers Brazilian engineers so since 2016 more than 130 engineers young engineers have had the opportunity to work in our projects to the left we have a photo of the Sievers and to the right a photo of the Amazonia and these engineers have had an opportunity to learn in practice how these things are done. This is also a benefit for the country, our national engineering. We have trained these engineers in activities from the integration, the tests, how to manage these projects, technology as uh, for payloads, guarantee of the product, a uh, follow-up, uh, yes, uh, um, product assurance, a space segment, the for the antennas and everything necessary for underground segment and yes, all the uses. The data from these satellites, especially from receivers for Amazonia, uh, these are images that are analyzed acquired and feed our systems on the Brazilian territory. Some of these data are available for the public in general. Especially we have the website, the web portal Terra Brazil, showing all of the data of the Earth satellites and here you may online if free of charge, you can learn what happens in our territory with our water resources, with Amazonia, and there are many applications for the society, for the scientists, for the decision makers, and here this is an example of the application that is only possible because Brazil has its own satellites for the Earth observation. This application may be visited by anyone interested in the Terra Brazil. I invite all of the Peruvian colleagues uh, to visit more. 
this website. I have talked about, first of all, of these satellites, as I've mentioned, they are very big, expensive, and when you need some investment and it requires investment planning, and for that we need an industry, an agency, and a policy. But nowadays, what we see in the world, and also in Latin America, it is that we have these satellites that are smaller, like such as the CubeSats, that they can uh, make space cheaper in a different way, more accessible. We can work in the space and make a sp the space an opportunity for players who, until some time ago, they couldn't uh, formulate, they couldn't have their own satellite. Just a while ago, I participated at an event of um, a small satellite CubeSats in Latin America. Uh, the Latin, Latin America, yes, Latin America. And we had uh, talks on the CubeSats that have already been launched in the region. So in, in, in August last year, that's the last updated, last update. At least one CubeSat was launched. Mexico, Costa Rica, Puerto Rico, and also you in Peru, you already have three. Uh, yes, uh, small satellites already launched. Brazil now has, has contributed with five. And what we observe here is that uh, there is a huge part of our neighbors and other neighboring countries who have already acquired the capacity, made an effort to have their own satellites with the platforms of CubeSats. I am sure that other countries are not here yet, but they are already formulating to do it. And it's possible that in the future, we will see other countries also uh, making this effort. From the CubeSats, Brazilian CubeSats, all of these uh, share common objectives. The development of our capacity to be able to have uh, objects with national uh, industry and, uh, uh, and then also to provide training and research for professionals from the universities and research organizations. The first CubeSat that Brazil launched was the NanoSat CBR1. It was launched in 2014 and it was an opportunity for the development of uh, yes, uh, a test for integrated circuits and to study the hydrology. Since then, uh, Brazil has launched four other projects. You may see here three of them, three objects. And the most recent one was the Floripa Sat 1, and it was an object uh, for the support that was developed by the University of Santa Catarina, by professors and students. Uh, so uh, you see the object here, a photo in the middle, and the city of Florianopolis in the back, and it was launched together with the Seabirds 4A in China, by China, uh, a, uh, on board of the Long March 4B SAT, and it has applications for radio. So it was developed in Brazil. The truth is that the effort of uh, the Floripa SAT started in 2014, a program called U Unispace, where we identified the opportunities to develop more simple, simpler equipment, and it took uh, five to six years so that it would be ready for its launching. But now that we have made this effort on planning, the truth is that creating, building an object like this, and at the same university, what would take six years before, now we do it in one year. So that's a good example of an investment that made by an agency to train professionals at the universities. And the result is this, what in the past took uh, two years. Now, for sure, we can do it in one year. So, and in the future, we can do it even faster. So in the life cycle of the project is shorter, but the investment, we always have to be thinking long term. So today, if we say the life cycle of a project in Brazil is of 12 months, 
we had to start thinking and supporting on this six years ago. So, as we are always thinking of the future and a country, what a country has to do is to perform an investment in its professionals. Yes. And we are also thinking or planning other missions in the future with a miniaturization of um, the systems. The first satellite that Brazil launched for the environment was this ACD-1 in the 90s and it carried a transponder a, uh, as you see it on the left a transponder with a mass of 4 kilos yes 4 kilos and it was an anal analogous system very useful for Brazil to obtain information from all of these points that we have here in the map information of what happens in the environment and the methodology on earth then the ETASAT uh, this object that you see on the right it was launched in 2018 and we had the opportunity to work on this prototype a transponder that provides the same service as the other but it has a mass of only 300 grams and now we have prepared another transponder the one you see at the bottom in the, of this photo that has less than 100 grams and that uh, does provide the same service as Brazil has been using since the 90s but now we can formulate to put this into a small satellite to provide services for our country and we are planning for the future to launch a CubeSat to manage the space with this transponder that has been developed at our National Center of Space Research. And we have many others. The truth is that we are preparing and briefly they will be launched into the space. This is the NanoSat CBR2, which is being developed by the University of Santa Maria and the National Institute of uh, Yes, research institute also for the ionosphere this is uh, the also COVID-19 uh, unfortunately brought difficulties for this uh, this should have been launched this year but it will be launched the next year and it is an example of another project that we work uh, with the universities also we have used uh, these uh, small satellites for to subscribe international cooperation. Uh, last year, uh, we have the president of AAB and uh, we, together with the uh, uh, attache, NASA attache in Washington, DC. So we subscribed uh, an agreement to study the atmosphere with this CubeSat. This is the sport. It is a scientific mission between Brazil and the United States that will study the conditions of the equatorial plasma bubbles in the ionosphere and that has big implications with the telecommunications and also the understanding of physics in the upper atmosphere. So in this cooperation, the United States, they are providing the scientific instruments and uh, Brazil will, uh, and uh, the US will also provide the launching. Brazil will be in charge of the platform and the operations. And it will, it will be launched in 2022. The Brazilian and American scientists will have an opportunity to collaborate and to produce the science that will come together from this project. There are also, we should also think about the sustainability of the space activity. And for that, you need business models. And the space agency has been uh, talking to the industry to provide opportunities, business opportunities. And here you have an example of a Brazilian industry, Visiona, with national capacities that are developing this CubeSat, as you can see here in this photo, a drawing of it, a photo a, with um, technology for uses in agriculture being developed in the 
in Bra Brapa, the Brazilian Corporation of Agricultural Research. It's not ready yet, but this is an example of the initiative, private initiative, suggesting services for the development of our uh, industries. As you can see this in other countries, this is very important, very important for uh, a space program so that we may have more participation, more private initiatives helping the program to develop our country. Brazil also formulates to invest in the access to the space. We have an area of big important area strategic of strategic importance. Last year, the United States and Brazil subscribed this agreement of uh, technological safeguards for the launchings from Brazil. And now, this is what they are planning to create uh, a space center in Alcantara, in the northwest of the country, for the launching of commercial rockets, and in the future, the launching of a national rocket for to have access to the space from the Brazilian territory. Okay, so I have prepared a couple of projects that offer services for the country in telecommunications, for earth observation, training of professionals of universities and research centers. And now I would like to talk a bit about the education of the young, younger ones. It is very important when we think of our programs to guarantee if we will have the students of today, we will become on the professionals of tomorrow. For that, it's also very important to have investments in education. We have uh, created uh, two years ago a vocational center of technology, which is a space where the young students may go and learn and to know about space, simple space systems. We have, for instance, uh, we say we have developed at this center a uh, CAMSAT. It looks like a very small, very simple, but it has been developed by Brazilian students. And also, uh, good examples of Tan Tancredo 1, launched in 2017, that was developed by one professor and students from a bachelor's program from the middle school in Brazil. And this is a good example of how we may use the space for to encourage the younger students to get training in these uh, disciplines, in these uh, subjects, in engineering, uh, in the sciences, technology, and mathematics. Here, this is a photo at our space center where there are activities for, for the different uh, rockets, satellites, the space. And here, in one of those days, we, we took a photo of the students and professors that visited our, our facility. With this, we come to the end of this presentation. I have tried to explain what Brazil is doing in the space and to explain in what way in all of these efforts they are helping us to develop Brazil. We have uh, systems for uh, space activities, for rockets, for satellites, with a partnership uh, with our industries and universities. We have efforts to guarantee we, that we can offer uh, to, to the challenges for our engineers and services for our country with applications of earth observation and telecommunications. This wouldn't have been possible to present all of the projects. I have presented the ones that I consider the most important. I haven't been able to present all of them, but we are working, thinking about the future, and we are planning what Brazil is going to do in the coming years in the space. For sure, we will be developing more and more of these small satellites. And for sure, we will be thinking on the future missions 
based on our platform. Yes, uh, so I would like to, at this opportunity, thank the a, a Space Agency in Peru, CONIDA, for giving us the opportunity to present to the Peruvian professionals what we are doing in Brazil, and also to leave a message that we, at this agency, we admire the CONIDA's efforts to organize these activities in Peru for the benefit of the Peruvian society. And I would like to send a special regards to all of the professionals working at PERUSAT. I have been uh, together, I have been following the efforts of PERUSAT that is already operational. And I believe it was an initiative, a very important initiative for the development of Peru. And that we uh, hope that after PERUSAT, other space systems will come to provide more and more development and services for Peru. And also to leave here uh, my regards to the, my, our CONIDA colleagues. We should start talking more about important projects and initiatives of common interest so that Peru and Brazil may also work and join efforts for the benefit of our societies and South America and Latin America. Thank you so much for your attention. Here I am sharing my email address, Rodrigo, Rodrigo Leonardi at aav.gov.br. If you are interested in talking to learn more about what we do, you may write to me. You can write to me. Thank you so much for your attention and goodbye.